Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News and Shinrin Yoku bringing you a grand solar minimum update Sunday, May 9th around 10.30 p.m. Mountain Time 2021. The models are in. Watch the snow grow in just the next two days. It's insane. Snow in Pennsylvania. 16 inches predicted for 100 square miles in Colorado. But the big story, snow and slush hits Northeast Ohio on Mother's Day. Keep calm. It's boom time on Mother's Day. It's true. Who knew? Not the kind of Mother's Day that you are going to want to remember. Weatherwise, Matt Wentz said the first alert. Well, snow fell in Ohio. And Mother's Day snow hit parts of northern PA as well. Take a look at the pen dot picture there. Snow is falling on Interstate State 80 and areas north uh, on Mother's Day in Pennsylvania. That's the Poconos. Some areas in northern Pennsylvania are seeing a dusting of snow on the ground. By the end of the day, they could see as much as three inches, like cinches. And we do have some models we're going to be showing to, the, to you in just a short moment. May 8th, storm damage reports from the center, center of the U.S. here in Topeka, Kansas. Many folks in northeast Kansas experienced a strong thunderstorm winds and hail about the size of quarters last night, along with heavy rain. A tornado warning was issued. Winds of 66 miles per hour were measured at a station in Manhattan and gusts to 70 near Junction City, Kansas. Hail was also a concern for folks in Dickinson County. So holy hail, electricity hail on the increase as they, it will forever in your lifetime four to eight inches of snow now possible in parts of southeast wyoming holy macaroni when will it end just talking to al a minute ago about how summer is fast approaching and it's still snowing shut up al get your hole i just gave him some bunt cake for goodness sake four to eight inches of snow possible in southeast wyoming and well 16 inches in eastern Colorado. Winter weather could bring up to eight inches of snow in some parts of southeast Wyoming in the forecast for the period between Saturday night and Tuesday, according to Cheyenne Office of the National Weather Service. And there they show a picture of a Prius or something like that with some snow on it. Ho, 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 heavy snow predicted for the mountains. Yes, it's true. The National Weather Service issued a winter storm warning for parts of Grand County, including Winter Park, Bertoot Pass, Rocky Mountain National Park, starting at 3 p.m. Monday through 3 p.m. Tuesday. Uh, holy crap, that's tomorrow. Yes, we're in for it. It's spring, ding, ding, winter storm watch in Hawaii. Can you believe this? I can only report on it. National Weather Service, here is your snowfall totals for the last 24 hours. Snow moving into North Dakota. That moved east into Ohio, and we'll be picking up those numbers tomorrow. Let's check the GFS model for everyone out there right now. And let's just walk it through. Here's your Monday morning. That snow is going to be moving into northern Colorado quite rapidly. There will already be, oh, my God, what happened there? Let's reset this. There will already be heavy amounts of snow on the ground in northern Pennsylvania. We're, we're looking at six to eight inches of the heavy wet cement right there. Boom. Uh, up into New York State as well. As the snow moves into Colorado and adds insult to injury here through Tuesday morning, take a look at the, it explodes Tuesday afternoon in the western part of the state. As well as Denver area, I mean, they could be picking up well, they will be picking up record snows. We will be reporting on it. Heavy snow in northern Utah, western Wyoming as well. Take a look at those models. Wow. And, and not a significant increase in any snow through mid-May or towards the end of May on this model. So that could be the last big event. Seismic update. No quakes of note. Little popper going off in Tonga just a second ago. Nothing significant. Worldwide Volcano News Update. Cinnabon continues to make the map. 16,000-foot puffer just moments ago. Sabancaya to 26,000. Suanosima to 8. But nothing of note except Cinnabon on an uptick. Vol Volcano Watch in Hawaii. As they get covered in snow, scientists are tracking the Mauna Loa summit changes, well, which will include snow in the next 48 hours. Here is the Mauna Loa West Flank Seismicity, the uptick here 
uh, just at the beginning of April, adding insult to injury, people thinking that an eruption is imminent. This has kicked off as well as the inflation tiltimeter has dropped down. So we're going to be waiting for the ground deformation to come back up before a new eruption. So that's what we're waiting for here. Seismicity has dropped off. Deformation has dropped down. We'll be waiting for this to fill back up with magma and push the, the ground back up. It seems that the ground is dropping down here and pushing magma into a different part of the system. So we're going to keep a close eye on that for you. As Professor Fritz Wagenholt, is that even a real person? Wagenholt? Solar-induced cooling. This decade, it is our only hope against dangerous CO2-reducing policies. This is a sign of the times. Literally, the powers that be and the billionaires have so much money, they are driving our planet into the ground. Leroy Brown. Downtown Leroy Brown. They're driving it into the ground. We have people like Bill Gates, who, who doesn't even have a graduate degree from college, I don't think, who is now the czar of vaccines and climate change. He wants to do experiments and change the temperature of the earth without consulting anyone. I mean, these people are completely in a class of their own. They're out in space and in a, on a flat earth, by the way. Professor Fritz Varenhold, however, is more pragmatic. And he holds a doctorate in chemistry. He began his professional career at the Federal Environmental Agency in Berlin before joining the Heisman Ministry of Environment from 1984 to 1990. He's a rock star in climate. In 2012, Varenheit told, together with geologist Sebastian Lunig, published the Descartes Sonne, Rumor die Klimastoffs nicht Staffenflet, in the cold sun, why the climate crisis isn't happening. It's because... We are dropping down into a grand minimum. The sun is shutting down, and the temperature on Earth has reset back into the 1980s in just a matter of months. But no one is picking it up except the people that are listening to me put it down. The recent La Nina is still having a cooling impact, according to NOAA. has nothing to do with the sun. Everything to do with natural climate variability, though which in their global warming linear world of failed models means nothing. Here's the current global temperature. And out of 200 models here, 199 have failed. And one is a little lower than the actual temperature. The rest of them are up over a degree above where we're actually at. And that is the nature of climate science. Total gobbledygook. Now, if we actually look at data sets like the GOES X-ray flux telemetry here, we can see that today we experienced a long-duration sea flare lasting almost two hours, hours of powers, and now that is on the ISWA Signet streamer here, showing that it will impact Earth, that coronal mass ejection, on the 12th of May. Hey, hey. It's coming up Monday. That's Wednesday, for goodness sakes. Coronal mass ejection heading toward Earth for a, from a long duration sea flare from AR 28. Uh, where is it? It is uh, AR 2822. That's what's popping it off. And there's that flare. Not only that, a filament located near center disk erupted between, uh, four hours earlier to the CME on May 9th. There is video of the CME that we have, and we'll show you that. So this is a video of the flare of the filament, not the solar flare. This is the filament four hours before the long duration solar flare. And it is going to release here. It's going to move south. Watch it move. And then boom, off the surface. Just like a schmurfus. Isn't that great? So we have a filament destabilization coming today with a long duration sea flare which produced a large coronal mass ejection, which we reported on at Magnetic Reversal News with video of the CME from Lasco C2 and C3. So please go over there and check that out. Links will be below. And I tried to reload it, and it is back, baby. We got it. All right. So here we're going to go watch it. Boom! Watch that, baby. Shoot off there. Let's just slow down the speed here to something more reasonable. 
And we're waiting for 1,400 UTC today, just hours ago, hours of powers, 18, 19, 10. That was when the filament destabilized. And take a look. Boom! Now, wait. I want to go back here because you can actually see when the filament destabilizes. If we move this through, right when we get to 10, you're going to see a little puff here, right there. That was the filament, and then that's the CME from the long duration flare. So this baby is headed towards Earth, and it's going to hit us on the 12th, according to the Iswa Signet streamer model here that we will leave you links below. It's going to have, I mean, these products are going to have significant impacts on stereo. So we're going to see it hit the actual stereo satellite. And that should be quite interesting. Also, Mercury is going to get slammed. Boom, right there. And we're going to take a little, uh, quite a nice little clip. So we should be looking for uh, low level geomagnetic storms, KP5 or 6. Potentially could get higher. Remember, this is all new territory for all of us. So there is that. Boom! CME headed towards Earth on May 12th. Let's take a check-in over here at the live volcano eruption in Iceland. Shall we? Hello. Hello, live eruption. Absolutely spectacular. No, there are no signs of letting up here at the Iceland Fisher eruption. In fact, it just keeps getting better and better each time we watch. Absolutely mesmerizing. Come give them a thumbs up over here. Subscribe to the channel at and tell them Diamond sent you. And that is some boom to knowledge. Couple of interesting science articles to end up tonight with. Evolutionary dispute. Most human origin stories are not compatible with known fossils. Well, we've known this and we've pointed it out. And beyond that, the problem is that the archaeological narrative starts around 10, 7,000 years ago as the beginnings, the origins of humanity, but most of the fossil record and even the archaeological record don't match that. And what I mean by that is you're looking at here a figurine carved potentially 40,000 years ago and also Well, Mother Nature uh -oh. is giving us lots of rain and some of you even got... Okay, we shut her off. And we also have cave paintings like in Lascaux and other caves in Europe that are now being redepicted as constellation maps where they're actually archaeoastronomical maps depicted as, you know, other objects like mammals, which we now call constellations, obviously, like we have the Big Bear, the Big Dipper, the Little Dipper, the Scorpion, Draco and other constellations. Well, 40,000 years ago, whoever was living on Earth, the Neanderthal, the Cro-Magnon at that time, they were painting pictures which depicted 
extreme knowledge of archaeoastronomy that is literally blowing the minds of scientists daily. And that you couple that with uh, artifacts like the Lion Man figurine here, which is probably carved during the time of Leo, sometime 20, 30,000 years ago. You know, 20,000 years before we knew how to be civilized. But we did advanced art and archaeoastronomy in caves. Are you kidding me? Are you picking up what we're putting down? The narrative is completely bunk. 90% of all the information you know is manufactured and made up. The history, especially, almost 95% fake news. What's not fake news is magnetic reversal news, where we bring you up-to-the-date geomagnetic effects, uh, space weather news, magnetosphere effects, catastrophic geologic effects, and historical uh, compositions on the Maunder Minimum and cooling times when the sun shut down. You can find it all here at Magnetic Reversal News, the news you need to know and the know you need to use it. And we've started this channel a few years ago. We have now just surpassed 18,000 subscribers, and we thank you. An excellent film we put up tonight, a podcast on the filament eruption followed by a long-duration C-class solar flare. I hope you go check it out. And that's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss-poor performance. In a magnetic excursion world, as we enter the grand solar minimum, and also enter a solar max in cycle 25, where it's our prediction that the grid will fail. Are you prepared for a grid down scenario back to the Stone Age, where the elites still have control of Starlink and other satellites, and maybe hardened bunker situations where they can communicate and you can't? Well, hedge your bets. Learn how to grow food. Get a step up on them. They're not coming for you in that situation because they know people in America have more guns than they have. So in order to be self-reliant and resilient in these times, you need to how to be self-reliant. And that means you have to have a constant supply of fresh water, fresh food, and fresh meat. What are you planting? We love each and every one of you. Thanks to our one-time donors, our Patreons, the people that share these videos. You're all heroes, and we respect that. And we'll see you all tomorrow as we plant more potatoes. Na -na 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 -na.